Hey guys, it's May May, and you guys are so good. Here's what you did. I did the bunny basket, and then I was messaged and asked to do the same, but in miniature, so you could use your punches for punch art instead of having to use dies for the bigger pieces for like the bunny head and things like that. If you're not familiar with the bunny basket, I'll put it in an iCard up here, and I'll also link it below. But I decided I wanted to try to make it smaller, so that's what we're going to do today. This is my prototype, so ignore his little messy face because I decided his fa I changed his face like 20 times. But today I'm going to show you how to make this chick. I think he's adorable, and look at that mini basket. It's the same thing, but miniature. All you're going to need. I used a 2-inch scallop punch. I cut out four of those, two orange, two yellow, and you need one 4x4 four four square of cardstock. I'm going to use my mini scoreboard this time, and you'll notice I have a black line down the middle of this one, just like I do the, my big one, and that's so I can line up on one line of the score tool. So I'm going to take my 4x4 four four cardstock, and on the angle, I'm going to put it in at 3.5, and, and then I'm going to match this one up at the bottom, and that's how I'll do all my score marks. I'm going to score at 3 inches, at 4 inches, and at 5 and a quarter. And this is going to make the same thing, but smaller, of the bunny basket. I'm going to turn this on the angle, again, putting it at the three and a half at the top. Now I'm going to score at three. This one's a little harder because it's small. Then at four, and then at five and a quarter. Now someone asked me, why would you turn it every time and score down here? And the reason I do is because it's harder for me to hold this and score on this side. On this side, yes, you can do that if you want, but I just would rather turn it into my scoreboard and then score at five and a quarter, just like this, and then turn it one more time and do five and a quarter. It's just easier for me because I need to be able to hold this paper and this smaller one, I really need to be able to hold it down. Now, don't worry about getting those score marks. I'm gonna tell you what they are in the description box below, but that's what they look like. Very similar to the big one we did, almost exact, but just shrunken down. <laughs> now we're going to do some slicing. We're going to cut away these two little diamond shapes on either side of our score. Now this can be done with an envelope punch board, but I have not practiced. I do not know the measurements for that yet. I will if you want me to, because I don't know if anybody's done a miniature one on YouTube on the scoreboard, but I can do a test and make that happen if you want me to. And then I can do like a quick little an update kind of video to go with this one so you can see it. Um, so I'm cutting all of those little diamond pieces. Now this to me is a super fun little project. Here's why. I love miniature things and this is perfect to sit on some students desk for a little Easter treat or for a spring treat. Okay, so we cut those little diamonds out. Now I'm going to go ahead and fold and crease everything. I find that you need to do that with this one before you do your slices fold and crease on all of the lines. These smaller ones are a little more like, you know, you have to really, really kind of manhandle them because they're so tiny. So they're gonna be in your hand like crazy. All right, see there, we got it. Now we need to make some slices. These two and these two are exactly the same. You just need to pick the two you're gonna work on, one here and one opposite of it here. We're gonna slice right beside it on either side of that point. So I'm gonna slice in and I'm gonna turn it and slice this side just because I found this is easier for me. Then I can flip it over and slice right beside and turn it and slice right beside. That's just an easier way for me to do it. But I'm gonna show you what we did. We basically just cut those pieces out. See that? Because this is gonna make our basket. Okay, now we can assemble. Same thing you did the other day. A Little bit of glue here, put a dot of glue on this side. And I'm gonna bring this flap and this flap together until they level out with each other. I'm gonna turn this sideways so you can see that. Do you see how that makes a straight line when I bring them together? Right here, that's what we're looking for. They pretty much just go together, just touch. Now I'm gonna do this side the same way. I'm gonna put a little glue here. I'm gonna bring these guys together like this, just to make it straight here at the top, just to let them touch. Perfect. Now, I'm going to glue this little guy down. The um, way you put this one together is exactly like we put the bigger version together. Exactly the same way. So I just glued that up. Do You can see I've got this point. I want to glue it down. So I'm going to wrap it over. Now one thing that's a little different, and I did it on purpose on this one, I made this with these dimensions so that it exactly wraps over. 
okay? It is a perfect wrap over there. So if you're just a little tight there, don't worry about it. Just fold this over and wherever it goes, it goes. If it's got a little bit of um, a resistance or anything, just push it over and you can even score it down. Like if it's pushing back a little bit, you can take your score tool and just kind of crease that down nice and flat. So let me show you that again because that felt a little confusing to me. Little glue here, fold up your side piece. That score line is literally exactly perfect with where we're at the top. So you might get a little resistance when you go to push this one down. Don't worry, just fold it down and wherever it folds is gonna work. All right, and then let's glue it into place. Now, these two side flaps are the ones I'm gonna fold in. But if you saw me make the frog the other day where I made two of these little baskets and connected them together, you could totally do that with one of these and make this a, a tiny little diamond box. But I'm gonna glue these down because we're making the chick. Now I am not going to put the strap across. I did that on the bunny because those bigger boxes, when you put stuff in them need a little support. I don't believe we're gonna need that strap across here. And that way, if you wanted to put a couple of Oreo cookies or if you wanted to put like a, a peppermint patty or something that's kind of round, it could sit in there. So I'm not gonna put the bar across. But should you decide to, it's just a piece of cardstock that goes up, over, and down. So it wouldn't be a big deal to do that. But we're gonna leave this just like this to go for now. So one of the scallop circles is your chick's head. This is super easy. You're just gonna glue this straight to the box. I just kind of line up one of those scallops across. You'll see this when you do it yourself. Just kind of make sure you've got the same amount of scallops on both sides showing. That's all I really do. And it goes to these five scallops will be glued on. So I'm just gonna put some glue here at the bottom. And then I'm just gonna place this on to my chick body. Line it up in the center as best you can get. It doesn't have to be perfect. Kids are gonna love these little things and you can make them into any animal. Here's what I wanna tell you to do now. Go out and look at animal punch art. Because we made this little basket so much smaller, you can use your punches now to make these little characters. Super easy. All right, let's work on his feet. Here's how you're gonna do your feet. I'm gonna take this scallop circle and I'm gonna fold it in half just like so at one of the scallops, okay? Now for the feet, I need three scallops to be the toes. I'm gonna come down here to the bottom where they cross over and I'm going to cut to the edge of that third scallop. Now I'm gonna show you this in just a second. Let me lay it down so you can see what I did. Move this one away. You can see I've got three little toes there and then this is the excess that I cut away. Don't need that right now, but you might, so sit it aside. Now I'm going to crease this down really well and open it up and slice it in half on that line. So see how this is going to make our feet for us? It's perfect. Just like so. Now we got two chicky feet. Now these feet then get glued to the front of the basket. Now you can do this whichever way you want. You can have big old feet like this. Let me hold this where you can see it. You can have a big old full foot just like that and it's really cute and kind of obnoxious or you can bring it down a little bit, still letting this edge line up, and then you can cut off that bottom. I'm gonna do it that way to show you what I'm talking about. So I just brought it down a little bit. Let's put some glue on this corner. I'm putting the tall toe toward the inside of the basket, and I'm lining up my cut edge of that to the edge of the basket, to the angle. So I'm just matching up my angles here. Now you see I've got a little piece hanging off. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna trim it away. I liked the foot a little down, but you don't have to do it that way. You can leave it the whole foot. Now on this side, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put a little glue in this little section. I'm gonna try to get my height the same on both sides of the feet. They don't have to be perfectly the same. It's a chick foot. He could be leaning one over more than the other. Lining up that angle on the edge and then snipping off the excess. Oh my goodness, isn't it cute already? Give me a break. Now let's do his little plume and his face. Right. Now for his beak, I'm gonna use the leftovers from this scallop circle. And do you see that I have four here? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut this away, just giving me two little scallops. And I'm gonna lay this down so you can see it. See how I've got two little scallops there? That's gonna be the beak for me. So I'm gonna put a little glue here to be able to hold my little beak. 
I'm use my quick stick because this is getting a little bit fidgety. I'm going to put that down on the glue. Just like so. Oh my goodness, there's his little beak. How cute is that? Now for eyes, I did some practice on my other one and I tried making eyes. I think googly eyes would be cute if you had tiny ones. But what I discovered is I like some little tiny black beady little eyes. I think they're really cute. Just like so. So I'm just making some little circles with my black pen. Just like that. Look how cute his little face is. He's so cute. Now we need his little plume here and his wings here. For the wings, I'm doing exactly the same thing I did for the foot. I'm going to fold this scallop in half. Okay. I'm going to cut it at an angle to the third scallop at the top. We're doing exactly the same thing. Let me lay it down and show you. Same cut. Don't need these. I'm going to move these out of the way. This guy, I'm going to now cut in half. Just like so. And these are going to be our wings. Super easy, right? Okay. They're going to get glued to the back wherever you want them to stick out. It's totally up to you how much wing you want to show and which way you want them to go. You can play around. You might want yours to go more like this. Just play around any way you want it. I think I'm going to have mine come kind of out. So I'm going to put some glue here. And what I do is just kind of look at it as I place them so I can kind of see where they're going. I think that works better for me. You see, I just kind of looked at it and placed that little wing where I wanted it. How cute is that? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Make sure you're gluing the same, um, the same on the other side. Don't twist it around or anything. That is so cute. Oh, my goodness. I love this little guy. Let me lay it down so you can see it. Look how cute. I'll press that down so it'll glue nice. All right, all we've got left to do is the little plume for the top of his head. And I'm going to use a scallop circle again. And you could totally, let me show you something. You could totally use these leftovers from the feet. And I did this on one of them, but I don't really care for how they look. I want my plume to be a little bit taller than that. So that's why I'm not using that little scrap and I'm making another one here. This is the extra scallop circle that you have. The first thing you're going to do is fold it in half. Okay. And then we're going to crease it down. Just like so. The next thing we're going to do, and this can get a little confusing. I need three of these scallops to be the plume. I want these three, and I also want these three, but this one in the middle, I don't need. So here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my scissors at the middle of the scallop here, and I'm going to angle them to the three scallops I do need. So see what I just did? Bring that where you can see it. I just cut away three scallops on a slight angle. Now I have four scallops left. I don't want this scallop, so I'm going to come down to that same point and cut that angle and cut away that little scallop I do not want. And it leaves me with this, okay? Now I'm gonna open this up and slice these in half. And this gets me four little scallop plumes for the top of our chick. I wanted to show you that. I did film it a while ago, but I didn't think I explained it very well. So I wanted to do it one more time. So now you have four plumes. We only need one for this chick. Put a little glue on the back of it. Lift it up, decide where I want my little plume to go. Somewhere like this. Super cute. Lay it down so you can see it. Look how cute. So again, I've got three plumes left for three more that I want to make. And we still only use two scallop punches and a four by four square of paper. I am in love with this little guy. And there you go, guys. It's a little chick box, which I adore. I think it is the cutest thing ever. I hope you guys make this. And if you do, share it with us over on our Facebook group called May May Made It and So Did I. I think this one's super fun. I don't have a Cricut file for this box. I do think you could take the one I did for the bunny and shrink it down and it would work just fine. Thanks so much for watching today, guys. Hope you enjoyed our miniature box and our tiny chick. Talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye.